our fixed exchange rate system works. In order to understand this uh, fixed exchange rate system, we must go ahead through two different kind of cases first. Then we will talk about the fixed exchange rate system. So case one. This is no fiscal policy, no monetary policy. But this is, first of all, a way to go ahead and understand what the fixed exchange rate system is and how it works. So case one is the equilibrium exchange rate is greater than fixed exchange rate. So how do we go ahead and do this? Let's say that we are in the EY space. And let's say that this is my LM star curve and this is my IS star curve. And this is the equilibrium exchange rate. The equilibrium exchange rate is found where the IS star and the LM star curves are meeting. However, let's say that the fixed exchange rate is set here. This is my fixed exchange rate. So the case that we are taking here is that the equilibrium exchange rate is greater than the fixed exchange rate. So fixed exchange rate is below. Let's take an example first to understand this concept. So suppose, see here in the diagram, I am using definition one. So if exchange rate decreases, it is depreciation. If exchange rate increases, it is appreciation. But let's say I want to give you an example first. So in example, it's easier to understand how much $1 is worth. Then we can revert it also. So let's say that $1 is equal to 70 INR fixed exchange rate. And let's say $1 is equal to 65 INR in the foreign market. When we write, so this is this is saying 70 per dollar. This is saying 65 per dollar. This is definition two. I can convert this in definition one also. One dollar is 70 INR. This implies that one rupee is one by 70 dollar. One dollar is 65 INR. This implies that one rupee is one by 65 dollar. So it's like this. Here I have one by 65. You're dividing one in 65 parts. It is greater than dividing one in 70 parts. So this is one by 70. So the fixed exchange rate is one by 70. Or in other words, it is 70 per dollar. It's a depreciated value. The flexible exchange rate or the equilibrium that you are getting in the market where IS and LM are meeting, that is 1 equal to 65. 
Now let's think about what should happen in this mechanism. When this happens, then what will happen in the economy? Any person, supposedly I am an investor, then what can I do? I can go to US and by going to US, let's say I can go ahead and buy dollar hundred. <clears throat> If one dollar is worth 65 rupees, then hundred dollars will be worth 6500. So I have gone ahead and spent these 6500 rupees. If I spend these 6500 rupees, what will I do? I will come back to India. And I will go to the Central Bank of India. And this Central Bank of India, this has a fixed exchange rate of 70. So the Central Bank of India in return will go ahead and give me rupees 7,000. So what I am going ahead and doing is that I am making in a way profit of five. So we can go ahead and work in the forex market. We can spend our money in the forex market. And by spending our money in the forex market, we are going ahead and buying Indian currency at a cheaper rate. Selling that to the central bank at a higher rate and making profit. So when I had to buy these $100, I bought it only at $6,500. And when I sold these $100, I sold it at 7,000, making a profit of 500. This concept of making profit by buying currency at a cheaper rate and selling currency at a higher rate, this is called the mechanism of arbitrage. In the later class, I will introduce covered and uncovered parity in this. How we can cover for risk, how we can cover for expectational exchange rate movements. We will talk about that. But for now, we want to understand that this is the concept of arbitrage, where you buy the currency wherever it is cheaper and you sell the currency wherever it is expensive to make profit. Now the question is, till what point can you make these profits? Can I make these profits forever? The answer is no. The moment individuals start doing this, what is going to happen? Everybody is going ahead and buying dollars from US. And they're going ahead and selling those in India. So when they go ahead and they continue this mechanism, slowly the demand supply curves are going to move such that your currency is going to depreciate and it is going to go towards the equilibrium in the fixed exchange rate market. So slowly what is going to happen is that this $100 are slowly going to become expensive because everybody is demanding dollars. So everybody is going to US. Everybody is buying dollars from there. Everybody is coming to India. Everybody is selling dollars in India. Right? So when everybody is demanding dollars in US, slowly the demand of dollars is increasing. It will appreciate or it will become expensive. So when it will become expensive, it will slowly start increasing towards fixed exchange rate. And instead of $1 equal to 65, $1 will be worth 70. 
So this is the mechanism that is going to go ahead and take this. This is what happens when the exchange rate is, this fixed exchange rate is below the equilibrium. Now just imagine what happened in India. In India, everybody started selling dollar and an exchange asking for rupees. So basically we have the demand of rupee started increasing. Everybody started asking, okay, you take, take these dollars from us, give rupees in exchange because they were getting more. So when this mechanism started, the supply of money increased. And increase in the supply of money means that the LM star curve shifted to the right. So I have currently my LM star curve here. And this curve started shifting towards the right. This becomes my new LM star star curve. And this becomes my new equilibrium. So the IS and the LM curve, where are they meeting now? They're meeting exactly at the fixed exchange rate. So you have to remember, in exam, this will not come. What will come will be different cases. But those cases are going to be derived because of this. So let's try and think about this. What are we saying? We are saying whenever the equilibrium exchange rate is greater than the fixed exchange rate, the LM curve shifts to the rise, right? Which means there is increase in money supply and LM star shifts to the right. Right? So let's write this down quickly. So please write down. Whenever the equilibrium exchange rate, equilibrium means foreign exchange market exchange rate, means where demand and supply is meeting. So equilibrium exchange rate is greater than fixed exchange rate. People demand foreign currency from the forex market and supply that in the domestic market. They exchange the foreign currency against domestic currency, thereby increasing supply of the domestic currency. This shifts the LM curve to the right and hence <clears throat> the arbitrage profits are removed. The equilibrium is restored where equilibrium exchange rate equals the fixed exchange rate. I want you to write the same kind of explanation for each diagram. That helps you to fix things in your mind. So you have to go ahead. So the case two, I will not write this. But for case two, once you are studying, you should be writing these complete paragraphs so that things restore in your mind. You get a gist of it. 
as to what we are doing in these diagrams. Now write down case two. 